The Philippines is a biodiversity hotspot rich in flora and fauna. Not only do we experience the beauty on land, but even underwater. When you get to explore the underwater world, especially through scuba diving, it's nothing short of amazing. I have been diving for a couple of years now, but I never really got to document what I had been seeing underneath the surface. And so for this episode, I want to take you with me on a couple of my dives during my previous visit to Anilao, Batangas. Hey everyone, so right now we are at Anilao and we are going to go on a diving trip with some friends and some family. Ah. Getting ready to get on the boat. We're ready to get on the boat. Let's go. Watch where you're going, huh? Yep. Okay. The Philippines is known for having an abundance of coral reefs, but those aren't the only things you get to see when you go diving. One of the sites we explored is called Dare Laut, wherein a wreck of a sunken casino can be found. Every time I'm in the ocean, I always pick up trash as I go. And I hope that you guys do the same so that it doesn't end up getting eaten by marine animals. A lot of which we also end up eating. So all this plastic ends up in our systems as well. Oh look, it's the crown of thorn starfish. This sea star eats coral polyps and is the most dangerous starfish in the world as it has venom that contains neurotoxins released through its spines that can shut down your central nervous system and leave you in extreme pain for hours. While they do help manage our reef systems, this animal can get invasive very fast and too much of it can impact the oceans negatively by eating too much of our coral reefs. I don't think I've ever been to a dive trip without seeing a puffer fish. There are many different varieties of puffers, but this one is one I don't really see quite often. The dog-faced puffer fish. This puffer fish is known for having, you guessed it, a face like a dog. Would you look at that? Puffer fish don't have scales and are best known for their ability to inflate just like a balloon. One of my favorite sea creatures is the moray eel. I consider these guys shy beings because they are always sitting in their caves waiting to ambush prey. And I love taking my time watching them because to me, they just have the most adorable face and kind of reminds me of reptiles. But the coolest thing about them is probably that they have a second set of jaws called pharyngeal jaws. After the mori captures its prey with its primary set of jaws, it uses its pharyngeal jaw to grab it and drag it closer to its stomach. Pretty cool if you ask me. Hmm, what could be hiding inside this basket sponge? Hmm. 
this interesting fish over here is called a flying gurnard. It has giant pectoral fins that look like wings that it flashes out to its predators when threatened in order to scare them off. A characteristic we can find in some land creatures as well. Ah, a school of barracudas. The fish that killed Nemo's mom! But don't worry, though they are known to be aggressive, that is only when they're hunting, and they hunt alone. So when you see a school of barracudas, there's no need to worry. This is a giant clam, and it can grow as large as five feet, and are important because they increase the abundance of fish species and improve the condition of reefs. The Philippines is one of the few countries they can be found in, and that's why we Filipinos must stand for their protection. Ever wondered what these long, squishy-looking things are? These are sea cucumbers. Sea cucumbers come in different varieties. They are not actual vegetables though, but are living creatures. Sea cucumbers are related to starfish and sea urchins. There are more than a thousand different species of sea cucumbers, and many of them are shaped like actual cucumbers, hence the name. And right after we ended our dive, I spotted something by the shore. At first, it looked like some sort of eel or snake-like creature, but when I got closer, I realized it was one heck of a really long sea cucumber. So I just had to take my chance and present it to the camera. All right, all right, we got it. So I just gotta lift it up. Woo! That was so hard to get. It can get out by the holes, I think. All right. Now, oh, you can't see it. Wait, let me get it. There, what we have over here is called a Sinapta maculata. I'm gonna hold that. I'm gonna try to take it out. Okay. So this is the world's longest sea cucumber. It doesn't look like it now, but underwater, it's very puffed up, and it's much bigger. This is really hard to catch because it's, I mean, even though it's so long and it's huge, it's really hard to catch because these guys are very sensitive to touch and light. So this was really easily running away from me. Now these cucumbers can grow up to 10 feet and they're often, like at first sight, you would think that these guys are snakes, but they're not. They're just amazing sea cucumbers. Now, sea cucumbers, you can't see it, but they actually have tentacles and they use these tentacles to glide through the rocks, through sediments, wherein they feed on small particles, small organisms that you can find in the ocean. These guys are very good in camouflage. As you can see, the fact that it's brown helps it to blend easily with the rocks and things you can find on the ocean floor. So these guys aren't so easily spotted by their predators and that helps them in surviving in the wild. These guys are very important to our ecosystem. Super cool, sea cucumbers are amazing creatures. So there you have it. This is the Sinapta Maculata. So that concludes this Anilao dive trip. I hope you enjoyed watching this and that you learned a little something, if not many things, along the way. The ocean is definitely my favorite place to be in because of all the unique and amazing creatures. So I encourage you to explore underneath the surface and see what else you can find, especially about the beauty of the Philippines. Because remember, every piece of wildlife matters.